वर्तते पूर्णस्य पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवावशिष्यते Namaste. <laughs> so I finally finished uploading all 1000 some odd videos to the archive, archive.org. And down in the video description is the link uh to our archive. <laughs> so all the videos are there plus I have also included when possible the documentation when it's available if I didn't just make something up out of thin air <laughs> I've included the documentation in each item and also the slides if any So you should understand this is a much superior platform to YouTube if only because you can download all the videos so if there's some particular series that you're interested in you want to go over it you can download it one time and then keep it on your computer for as long as you like so that's finally done and that led to another insight which is that well for one thing we have a huge fortune of material if i was business minded which i'm not <laughs> i could exploit this i could probably make a million bucks with it uh, but we are still looking for people to help with the transcriptions and the editing and someone to manage the course site and this is very important you can make it into a nice small business but you have to be qualified So anyway, that leaves me free <laughs> confirmed <laughs> free and I'm kind of the king of the hill. Now the reason I started off this video with the invocation to Sri Ishopanishad is that this knowledge is purnam purnam means full complete profound uh transcendental godlike huh because really only brahman is purnam you know some people when they interpret that verse go spin it right off into some sectarian views about who's god and all this stuff but you know it's already determined by the vedas and upanishads and vedanta that brahman is the absolute so the only thing that can be purna is brahman so that leads us to an interesting question that if we are actually all brahman why do we feel incomplete Why do we feel that we have to have stuff and do stuff and know stuff and so on? This is because we are in a lower state of consciousness. This is because our nature as the self as Brahman has been covered by upadi. We went over upadi in a prior video. So, what to do? Well, what you have to do is obtain somehow or other the king of knowledge. So let me explain. There are some nice verses. <laughs> Mr. Peacock, huh? He's patrolling the area and anything he doesn't like then he'll yell at it. <laughs> श्री भगवान उवाच इदं तु ते गुह्य तमं प्रवक्ष्याम यानसूयवे ज्ञानं विज्ञान सहितं यज्ञात्वा मोक्षयसे शुभात 
Sri Bhagavan said, I shall impart to you this most confidential realization, which can only be given to the non-envious. Realizing this, you shall be delivered from the miserable material existence. Bhagavan said, Well, in Bhagavad Gita, which is from Mahabharata, that means Krishna. Krishna is Bhagavan. But I think that's pretty dicey. Huh? I think it's very sectarian. From my point of view, Mahabharata and the Bhagavat Purana are simply advertising for Krishna. <laughs> A very sectarian view. But if we abstract it a little bit, Bhagavan means the fortunate one, the self-realized one. So Bhagavan can be anyone who is self-realized. Sometimes Narada Muni is referred to as Bhagavan in the scriptures. And of course, Ramana Maharshi was referred to as Bhagavan by his followers and the Buddha also and, and actually many others. Anybody who is self-realized deserves the title Bhagavan because they are the most fortunate. So, he's saying, I shall impart to you this most confidential realization. It's most confidential. Huh? Mahaguhyam. Most secret. And why is that? Because it can't actually be given in the form of knowledge. Knowledge are, is simply words about something. Whereas what we're talking about is the actual realization, the actual direct perception of the Absolute. Which can only be given to the non-envious. What is envy? Envy is when Someone possesses something that you can't have, but you're jealous of them because of it. Actually, jealousy means when someone possesses something that you can have, huh? like your ex-girlfriend or something. <laughs> and then you become jealous. But to be envious of someone is when they have something that you can't even have. You know, like like riches or knowledge or beauty, huh? something which is distinctly theirs alone. So if a person has developed to the point where they've transcended this envy and accepted others as they are, and of course himself as he is, then only he can be given this most confidential knowledge. And finally, Realizing this, you shall be delivered from the miserable material existence. Material existence is miserable. Huh? Birth is miserable. Childhood is miserable. Adulthood is miserable. Oh, I left out adolescence. <laughs> and of course, then there's old age and death, which is nothing but misery. Unless you're self-realized. <laughs> so... This miserable material existence is something we should all want to transcend. We should all want liberation, moksha. So this knowledge, this king of knowledge, gives the means by which we can attain this release, moksha, self-realization. So what is that knowledge? Raja vidya, raja guhyam. Pavitram idam utamam, pratyakshavagamam dharmyam, susukham kartam avyayam. This knowledge is the king of education, the most secret of all secrets. It is the purest knowledge because it is transcendental and because it gives direct perception of the self by realization. It is the perfection of religion. It is most joyful and it is everlasting. So this knowledge which we are giving on this channel is all 
based on or related to this king of education, Raja Vidya. Uh, Vidya means education or book knowledge. But because it leads to realization, it's also Raja Guhyang, the most secret, most confidential. It cannot be understood by those who do not deserve it, who haven't worked for it, who haven't done the sadhana to realize it. And because it gives direct perception of the self, oh, this is a big deal, very big deal. That's why I made the video intro the way I did with the images of the sun and growing light and even brighter into Brahman. Because it gives direct perception of the self. And thus it is the perfection of religion. This is the ultimate aim of the Vedas, Vedanta. And because of that, it is most joyful. Huh? Not just joyful, most joyful, susukam, very joyful, most joyful, and it is anantam, it is everlasting, unending. Once you realize it, you can't unrealize it. <laughs> it happened to me in 1984. <laughs> And since then, I have been deepening my realization and understanding of what it means. And so I'm in a good position to explain, although that won't transfer it to you, but it will give you the means to attain it for yourself. So what is this knowledge? Well, we've been over it before. The Quaternity Principle in an earlier series. And the quaternity is, well, it means something that has four parts. Like the trinity has three parts, so the quaternity has four. And what are they? Let's take a look again. Why does Lord Shiva carry a trishul, a trident? Because there are four states of consciousness. Turiya is the basis of them all. Jagrat means consciousness of the world, the body and the senses. Svapna means dreams and Shushupti means deep sleep. Now these are the four states of consciousness. One who knows this knows the self. It's very easy to observe. Every day we go back and forth between waking and dreaming and sleeping. Uh, so if we simply observe our own consciousness, we can become aware of these. And to observe these three is to be in the position of, or from the point of view of, Turiya, the fourth. Now the fourth state of consciousness is not something you can observe as an object outside yourself, because it is the self. Try to understand. Turiya is the source of all the other three states. So when we realize Turiya, the other three states become the object of our consciousness. See, so you can also turn that around and by making the other three states of consciousness the object of your observations, you automatically become situated in Turiya. But you can't see Turiya, you can only be Turiya. It's the self, so it's only subjective. It's not a thing that you can be aware of, but it's awareness itself. So this is the ultimate. This is the king of knowledge. This is the king of education, the most secret of secrets. And that is what this whole channel is about. Aum Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung.